1032 92.1 WROI. WROIFM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and audio RTC Channel 4 with uh, hopefully coming up some uh, video as well. Hi, Scott. Good morning, sir. Scott's back in the studio again. He's been here most of the morning because he's also repairing our equipment as well as the RTC equipment. See? A man of many talents. A man of many, many talents. John Alley, President, CEO of Woodlawn Hospitals with us this morning. John, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, always enjoy coming down here. Talk with us about the trustees meeting yesterday. Had, had our meeting yesterday, uh, kind of doing some of that year-end catch-up and, and getting some things in place that we know we're going to do next year. Uh, one of the things that we did was actually uh, got the budget for next year approved. And uh, it was kind of difficult this year because of the, un you know, health care is uncertain all the time. Right. This year it's even more so because we're not really sure... You know, the rhetoric coming out of D.C. is uh, they're going to change all the health care delivery systems. So we are very conservative what we think is going to happen next year. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for, you know, most folks in business, a budget is a fairly static item. You, you kind of know what your sales are going to be, you know what your expenses are going to be, and you can come up with a fairly good number. The issue we have, and the, the, it's taken a while for the board to kind of get their arms around it, is we're really good at knowing what our expenses are because we have a lot, a lot of ours is fixed costs. We have to maintain a minimum staffing at all times. So whether we have, you know, zero patients or 10, the staffing is about the same because you never know when somebody's going to come in. So the expense side is a fairly easy for us to get to. And I think when we looked at where we're at this year, we're at 2% difference between budget and actual. And when you're talking, you know, multi-millions of dollars, that's not too bad. The one we have a hard time with is that revenue side because sure. we just don't know. It's it's not a static product. You you know you you kind of got to relate back to some in, you know manufacturing terms. We don't know what our product is, and uh, so it's kind of hard to figure out you know from a revenue side who's going to be sick, who's going to come in, how they going to pay, what insurance they're going to have. There's just a ton of variables, and uh, so that was probably the hardest part is just let's let's predict the revenue side. So we tried to be very conservative for next year and actually ratcheted down a little bit what we thought, uh, you know, when we looked at this year's actual, you know, we actually budgeted a little flat, uh, just not anticipating a, a very much of an increase. The other side of that is, you know, our business is to put ourselves out of business. And with all the wellness programs and a lot of the preventative that we've got, we're just not seeing as many folks anymore. And in the last three months has been pretty, uh, you know, evident looking at the financials. Uh, volumes have really, really been down. You know, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Sure. The good thing is our, some of the well, wellness programs are working. The bad thing is it's kind of difficult for us on a, on a budget to adjust to that. So uh, we did get the budget approved, so hopefully we're going to hit budget next year. And modest income, I think we've only put about three or $400,000 profit for next year. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to hit that. Um, this year we're hoping to hit a black number okay. by the end of December. Okay. Uh, right now we're, you know, kind of in the red. And most of it happened in the month of November. Very low volumes month of November. You know, we had the, the holiday with Thanksgiving, so a lot of folks were gone. Historically, is it that way? Uh, historically, we can kind of go back and look at some of our months that are, are bad. November, December is usually not our, our really good months. And, you know, this year is probably not going to be a real good year for us. And, and historically, everything's like it seems like it's on a four-year cycle for the okay. hospital. We'll have three good years, one bad year. So... Uh, it looks like we're in year four. Uh, it's going to be kind of a... Pre presidential election year have anything to do with that? I, and that could be. I, I just hadn't thought of that. That there's, again, that uncertainty coming through there. So, but we did get the budget approved so we can get that loaded in the system and start next year. And, and uh, you know, let's just make sure we hit budget. Uh, the other item that, you know, kind of is a budget breaker a little bit for us is we're required now to do so much more reporting to Medicare on quality standards. Well, the information system we have in our physician's offices, it, we have to upgrade. The current version we have doesn't support that. So, and it's a fairly high penalty for us. It starts off the first year. If we don't meet these reporting requirements, we get a 4% reduction in our payments from Medicare. And then year two, I think it goes to five. Year three, it's seven. Year four, it's 9% reduction. Wow. So that forces us, we got to upgrade that system. So that requires... Uh, you know, a lot of new servers, a lot of new software. So it's going to, you know, that expenditure is going to be somewhere around $115,000 to $125,000 to upgrade that system to meet those new governmental reporting requirements. And, you know, it's a lot of that stuff behind the scenes. Everybody says, well, why is health care so expensive? You know, that's it. A lot of the stuff's outside our control. We're, to we're told you have to do this. 
Well, to do it, you have to upgrade and put in all new infrastructures to do that. So hopefully we'll have that in sometime by the end of the first quarter so we can start gathering that data, send it to, to Medicare so it doesn't affect our payments as we move forward. Because, you know, and if we do meet the standards, the converse is we can get up to a 4% increase in payments, 5, 7, or 9. So there is an incentive for us to do this because if we meet the, the standards, the goals that they set, they'll give us extra money to do that. So, you know, for us to go after that, I think it's the right thing to do. So we'll be doing a upgrade to the IS system, and, you know, those never go well. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you have plenty of backups. Make sure you have right? plenty of backups. Back yeah. to the budget for just a minute, John. Yeah. Uh, could, could also part of this be with the technology in medicine and the way medicine is changing that hospital stays are shorter, perhaps, in Absol certain absolutely. procedures than what they used to be? When we go back to, you know, when you and I were younger, you know, an appendix. You'd right. be in the hospital 10 days. You come in at 7 o'clock in the morning, you're home by noon. Right. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of that technology has changed that. Our business now is predominantly converted to an outpatient procedures. Uh, you know, about 80% of our business is all outpatient, whereas 10 years ago, 85% was all inpatient work. So we've had to make that change, and that sounds like, well, you know, 10 years, that's a long time ago. For us, that's not. I mean, it takes a long time for you to change your complete delivery system. So we're moving more and more toward that outpatient market, uh, and it's just technology is driving that. And I think as we move forward in future years, you'll see even more and more technology coming through that uh, an inpatient stay in a hospital, you're going to be really sick. There has to be a major reason for that because technology and, and new procedures is going to be able to fix you and get you out of there same day. Whereas now, you know, if somebody stays in the hospital four or five days now, that's a long time. You know, years ago, that was you ran it out and forth. So it's uh, it's just we have to look at it differently. And us more senior folks who are used to the good old <laughs> days, uh, you know, it really changes our thought process. How do we put the organization in that position to make that big culture change from inpatient to outpatient? As a county entity, does the state have anything to say about your budget? No. Okay. You know, it's uh, basically the hospital, yes, yeah, it's, it's considered a county hospital. But when you go way back in time when that first came out, that was actually a funding mechanism for hospitals to be able to tap into some monies out there that was designated as state government or county government. So it, we're classified as a county hospital. But, you know, really we don't have a lot of the reporting requirements that other county offices do. It, it's more of a paper title to access funds 30, 40 years ago. Okay. And, you know, at some point, I'm, I'm guessing somebody will look and say, well, let's change that whole law and, and you know, tweak it a little bit and, uh, you know, maybe take that county designation out. There's there's not many of us left. Uh, right. You know, there I think there's maybe only 30 county hospitals left in the state of Indiana uh, because of the absorption into the much larger systems right. and stuff like that. Um, at, once we got through that, we got into the... Okay. The financials, or my CFO tried to make that a really short report. <laughs> I bet he did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, Dave would do it that way. Yeah, he kind of just said, can I just have approval without making any uh, any numbers shared? So, But we did have to go through it, uh, the painful procedure of going through the financials. Had about $9.5 in gross revenue. Uh, wrote off $5.8 And again, you know, that stuff is just outside our control. Right. For us to participate with insurance companies, Medicaid and Medicare, we dis have to discount, and uh, you know, we only uh, if each dollar we bill out, we collect maybe forty-one cents of that dollar. Um, and you know, any other business try that, they they say you're nuts. But well, we've been fighting that sixty percent. We've been thing fighting for, that forever and yeah, ever, for and I time. don't think it's going to change a right. whole lot. I mean, it's just kind of I think where you know the the curve has kind of settled somewhere in that fifty-eight to sixty-two percent is about where everybody's at right now in the in the whole contracting with the third-party payers. So it left us, uh, you know, cash to play with, so to speak, about three point eight million, and we spent four point three. So, you know, that uh, that leaves a five hundred and thirty-five thousand dollar loss for the month. So that's that's our biggest loss right. year to date, and it was just due we had very very low volumes during the month of November. December uh, has picked up. You know, when I start looking at the census and our and our revenue, it appears that it's going to be a little better than what November was, and. Uh, our poor surgeons right now is, is that year in where everybody says, oh, I've met my deductible. Uh, you know, they're, they're working themselves to death. They're having some 12, 14, 16 hour days uh, trying to get everybody in and they realize, okay, you've met your, let's see what we can do. And, 
you know, it's, it's tough getting everybody scheduled. Uh, you know, at some point they have to take a break. I mean, they got to be able to kind of sit back and recharge. So we're doing our best to get everybody in, but I think there's going to be a few folks that we just can't get them scheduled in prior to December 31st. And, uh, you know, they, they're not happy, but there's only so many hours in a That's day, right. and, and you got to let the staff and the surgeons – yeah, you know, I want them fresh. You know, if, I, I don't want a tired surgeon uh, working on me. But, you know, they're doing Dr. Nile and Dr. Uh, Sheedy is just doing a, a yeoman's job of trying to get everybody done. And uh, I know they're putting in a lot of late hours. Surgery staff, I mean, they're, they're there exactly. also. Exactly. They have to be there, too. They're there, sure. too. And, uh, you know, lots of times they're there before the surgeons and have to stay after to get everything, you know, finalized. So everybody's doing a very good effort to try to get as many folks in this year with their deductible and try to meet their needs and uh they're i'm just so proud of what they're doing surgeons and the staff okay and that was pretty well the, the board meeting kind of okay. getting ready and like i say the budget was probably the big thing getting it loaded and, and kind of explained for next year i know in talking with the community relations director deb paxton you have a doctor here OBGYN, for a couple of months he's actually here for six months okay um yeah, we're very pleased to have Dr. O'Schooler in the, right. into the building. I've uh, been there a week, so he's still trying to get his feet wet and kind of learn right. our system. Uh, you know, OB is a fairly integral part of any health care delivery system. So, we, you know, we had uh, Dr. Tapley left, so we, we wanted to bring Dr. O'Schooler in. And I uh, hope folks will start coming and seeing him. Uh, fine gentleman. Spent quite a bit of time, you know, just discussing what he's looking for. Um, you know, he's been what's called a locum physician, which means he's kind of traveling around. So okay. I asked him about that. He says, I'm trying to find a home. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can meet his needs. You know, given six months, I think that's going to be plenty of time for him to test drive us and for us to test sure. drive him. And we'd love uh, for it to work out. And at the end of that period, you know, he's saying, you know, because he, he lives in Plymouth, so it's nice and close. Uh, hopefully we can meet his needs and, uh, you know, we can make it a permanent position with him. There are a lot of those uh, medical people kind of that travel around like that, aren't Correct. There? Yeah, and it's, you know, a lot of the physicians, I kind of ask them, well, why do you like doing that? And they say, I get to see the world. <laughs> uh, and and it's true. I mean, sure. uh, Dr. O'Schooler was in uh, Hawaii for a while. Right. So you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go. It allows them that opportunity to say, do I want to live in that area? And, and kind of, you know, get their feet wet in there. And, you know, it's... Uh, you know, for some of the younger docs, they like it from the adventure uh, of being able to move around. And eventually, most of them always do say, okay, I've, I've done what I want to do now. Of all the places I've been, I want to go back to X and, and make that my permanent location. So uh, it's kind of interesting to talk to some of the folks that have done that for a while. Uh, we even have some nurses that like doing that. Just, you know, they're, they're single. So it allows me the opportunity to see the country. Exactly. I can go coast to coast, you know, work six to eight weeks. <clears throat> six eight months whatever that assignment is then they can go somewhere else so it adds that variety to their job john alley's president and ceo woodlawn hospital bring us up to date on the trustees meeting yesterday john kind of uh, take a second recap 2016 for us in terms of woodlawn hospital would you please oh wow um I, the best word is kind of a, a a year of change okay um you know, we were, you prepare for one thing, and then all of a sudden uh, the government changes the rules. And I think one of the big things that probably affects us the most is when we came into 2016, we had all the companies with the Affordable Care Act offering the different insurance policies, which did help us because it reduced our bad debt. It reduced our charity care because of folks getting into those plans. Well, now as we get to the end of 2016, we see those plans going away. And, uh, you know, the insurance company said, well, we're not making as much money as we thought, so we're discontinuing that product. So that's, you know, that's that's a big change because we know some of the folks who had insurance last year probably will not have it next year. So, again, we got to retool, you know, how we do that delivery system. I think technology is the big thing. Um, you know, we had a very good CT scanner, and then all of a sudden it kind of came out, and the FDA says, you got to watch your doses, folks. You're giving too much radiation to folks. We were exempt from uh, that process because of being a critical access hospital. They said, well, you don't need to worry about it. Well, no, I do. You're sure you it, do. It, it's patient care, what right. we're talking about here. So we went ahead and said, no, we're going to make the change, go to a low-dose CT scanner. And when we had to report uh, an update on that, I think we're, there's only three hospitals in the state right now that have converted to the low-dose CT scanners, one in Indianapolis, one up around Chicago, and us. But it's the right thing to do for the patients. And, uh, you know, what it does is, especially on a head CT, you get 50% of the radiation that you got before. You get, you know, 30% less on a uh, torso scan. And radiation is kind of unique. It doesn't go away. Right. Uh, all your x-rays, your CT scans are cumulative. So it builds up over time. So if we can start reducing your exposure to that radiation, 
you know, long term, it benefits you. You know, what is that long term effects? If if you have a c- chronic condition that requires a lot of CTs, you get a lot of radiation dosage. So what else does that do to you? So we we were very happy to make that conversion. Uh, the board was on board once we kind of explained why we wanted to do it. It's patient safety, it's patient care. So we're kind of proud. So, you know, that takes time. It takes money to do those things. So I think what we've done in 2016 was look at infrastructure and what do we do now to make us better as we move forward the next three to five years. And so we, we had a lot of uh, internal, I guess, okay. tweaking, for okay. lack of a better term, of, of to meet those patient safety goals. And uh, it's the right thing to do. Uh, okay. Kudos to Woodlawn because uh, with the low-dose CT scanner, I remember, uh, since you mentioned, one of the few in the state to have that. But I think when you had this, came, uh, put the 64-slice CT scanner in, at that time, you were one of the few in the state right. to have point, that particular we technology. Right, the 64-slice, and I think right. we were the second or third hospital in the state of Indiana exactly. to do that. So, you know, our goal is not to be waste money. But if we're going to invest in it, let's get the best we can that meets the needs of our hospital and our community. And that's what we did. We go out and we look at those things that we need to do, not that we want to do, because they're two different things. The wants and needs usually never seem to coincide. So we want to go, what is needed for this community to provide that best care we can? And that's what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, it uh, works out for us. I mean, it... it, uh, it's just phenomenal what these these new CT scanners and, and can do, and it's amazed you know me to go watch what these units are. It's just phenomenal to see how a computer reconstructs all this stuff. Any major changes coming in 2017? I think not. Okay. Um, you know we're we're still we're going to look at that renovation of our patient rooms. Right now, my best guess we're probably looking 2019 on that, just because of the dollar amount that's right. going to cost us. We have some other things that we'd rather more important than remodeling the room so at some point we will have to our rooms but right now we'd rather get some other infrastructure in place to meet some you know critical needs right now because the room is it's a kind of a a need but not a critical need right. we have some others that are a little higher up that list so that's what we might and get you done. never know what's going to crop up and we never know <laughs> you know that's the bad part you never know what's going to break that's right and uh, <laughs> when something breaks in the hospital it's expensive uh-huh. no matter what it is uh-huh. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. John, all year long, thank you very much for stopping by for the reports. We look forward to visiting with you again next year. Happy holidays to you, your family, and everybody at Woodlawn Hospital. Same to you, and to all the listeners out there, just be careful this holiday season. If you're traveling, take a little extra time, slow down a little bit, and get there safely. John Alley, thank you. Thank you.